Close your eyes, I'm moving the camera. I think we're actually pretty good here though. Hello everybody. I can hear thunder, but I was wondering if it's raining. No rain yet. Okay, so for everyone coming in on the replay, it's 10 minutes to three. We usually start doing the live stream at about 3.05. This is a live stream, which means I'm going to be talking almost nonstop and I'm going to be interrupted numerous times because anytime someone has a question or says something funny in the uh, little comment area, the chat area, I'm going to stop and say, hi, Marie, hi, Giovanna, hi, Denise, hi, Della, who else do we have? I know there's another person, Stella Ann, hello, hello, I hope everyone is doing wonderful. If you're not interested in a rambling, chatty type video, then this might not be the replay video for you. There are over, over 800 videos I think you can check out. Several of them are live, but there are plenty of videos for you to check out. And I lost my train of thought, and that's what happens during the live streams, because when I'm recording a video, I can edit out when I lose my train of thought. But I get a lot of comments and, I don't want to say complaints, but people get a little upset that I talk a lot during the live streams, and I stop and ramble, and I say hello to everyone. Hello, June. Hello, Rosemary. So if that's not something for you, then maybe the live stream replay is not a good video for you. Today, we will, of course, be sewing, not until a little bit after 3 when everyone shows up, but we are doing the Sawtooth Star or the Evening Star. So this is what it looks like at the 12 and a half inch size, just to give you guys something to see and chat about. This is what it looks like in the 6 and a half inch size, but... Today, we're going to put the six and a half inside the 12 and a half center so that we have a star within a star because that's what we all are, aren't we? Just stars. Yeah, that's sappy. That doesn't work, but it, there we go. I'm walking in circles over here where you can't see me. While waiting for you guys to, while waiting for the time to show and be ready to hang out with everyone, I am working on we are all stars, Marie, we all are. I have my Christmas embroidery from the Birdie Stitches. I am on December, and I think that leaves me January and February, and then I think I'm all done. Then I can start turning them into little mini quilts. Hello, everybody, hello, hello. I'm sure I missed a few people, so I'm just gonna do a blanket, hello, hello. BC Tracy, are you new here? I don't know if I recognize that actual name. My apologies if you've been here for years and I'm just having a Robin moment. Thank you, Marie. Click that thumbs up. Yes. And if you guys aren't subscribed, uh, it'd be really nice to subscribe to it. We are at 40,000 and change on subscribers. Once we hit 50,000, I'm going to do a big giveaway. I haven't decided yet, but I might actually give away 50 items for the 50,000, but don't hold me to it. I was thinking some, maybe some fabric postcards, some mini quilts and mug rugs, maybe uh, some discounts to my Etsy shop. Sunny made it live, yay! So I thought that might be fun for 50,000. When I turned 50, I made 50 plus items and gave it away to charity. At the time, Rob was going through his chemo, so I made over 50 port pillows and donated to the cancer center where he was being treated. So I thought 50,000 subscribers, that might be nice. Could you imagine if you were one of those channels that had a million subscribers and you're like, I'm going to give away a million something or another's. That would be crazy. I'd like to find somewhere to make some RS Island craft stickers and the little pins that you can put like on your bag and everything like that. I just haven't found one. Every time I find a channel here on YouTube that's like, this is where I got mine. I love them. They're great. And then the next thing you know, they're like, they had bad results one right after another. So I'm like, okay, they're not good. 
So if any of you guys out there make stickers, uh, you know, send me a message to rsilentcrafts at gmail.com. I would love to talk to you about having some stickers made that I can put in my shop and sell. Oh, Dahlia, I don't even know where that is. And they are so helpful. Everyone who has a port, I know how much they appreciate them and how much they love them. Because I've talked to you guys who have made them for friends and family members. And I've talked to the cancer center who loves them. Oh, I don't know if my lights are going crazy. Lisa made it. She's got family visiting. A port pillow. Do you know what a port is, Denise, when they have that little thing in their chest to put the chemo in? Or anyone who needs IV treatments a lot, they get a port put in their chest. It goes directly to, like, the main artery that goes to your heart. And the seatbelt hits it all the time. So you make this little pillow. It's like, well, it's a pillow, and it has Velcro, and it goes on there. I have videos for it. Let me see if I can pull up my channel and find the video for the port pillow so you can make one. There's, of course, other videos out there, but I'm a little partial to mine. At the time that I made mine, I have to say that I feel like the ones that I saw, mine, of course, tend to be a little bit um, more in depth. Come here, computer. You guys know I like to give R-S-I-S-L-A-N-D. Sorry, I have to spell it out loud when I do my name. It's so long. I like to give lots of tips and tricks and extra things and stuff when I do my tutorials. Sewing a port pillow for cancer patients. Copy link address. Come back to you guys. Did you disappear? Nope. So there you go, that should take you right to the port pillow if you need to make one or you're just curious about them. I know a lot of you have been watching the videos when I put them in the pinned comment and I've gotta say, I've been actually having fun trying to either find a video that goes with the tutorial that we're doing that day or you know, my Whip It Wednesday, or just finding a video that maybe you guys haven't seen yet. And some of you that have been around here for a while just haven't seen it. Hi, Jackie. Oh, Dawn, yeah, they complain all the time. I've been just, most of the time now, I block them. I tried to explain to people in the past, but it just, you have to go through these phases when you're a YouTuber, you know, you, you get upset because people are so mean and say things, how come nobody likes me? And then you're like, well, let me explain why I talk too much. And then, you know what, I just block you. But I have to say, I mean, I still talk a lot, but I feel like I've reined it in a little bit now before, you know, like in my earlier videos, like the, um, the folded star, the folded hexagon star video for the Christmas ornament. I talk a lot in that video, but so many people have thanked me because I showed how to do it and then we did it again and I talk slow and I try to keep my hands out of the way and stuff like that. Oh, kidney patients. Does the seatbelt hit? Oh, is, is the port still up in the chest area, Marie? I know there's a lot of people also that have like the feeding tubes in their stomach and stuff. I wonder if the port pillows would help that. Thank you guys, you're all so sweet. I wonder if the port pillow helps for like feeding tubes and stuff and the J tubes and all of that. Hi, Davi, I'm so glad you could make it. You have such a busy, busy life. It's in the upper chest area still, yes. Thank you, Giovanna. It does take a little bit. It's like being back in school and high school and even middle school and stuff. You have to come to terms with who you are. And 
you know, there are people where I find a channel and I watch a few videos and I'm like, okay, this channel's not for me. And then I just leave. They don't, they never knew I was there. I mean, even the people when I watch their videos every week, they don't know I'm there because you know, I don't always leave comments. I'm usually too busy doing something. And I know it's not the best, but sometimes I just can't get in there or leave a comment. But, you know, everyone's not for everyone. That's why there's millions of people here on YouTube that you can go watch that if you don't like my channel, there's some... Teresa Down Under does a little quilt blocks, and I watch hers all the time because they're like one and a half minutes, five minutes long. There's no talking. It just, here's the block, here's how you do it, and you're done. There's no extra conversation about anything. Thank you, Janet. I love this block too. Oh, I meant to grab something. Let me, oh, let me put this up and I wanna grab some fabric that I wanted to show you. With the holidays coming up and wanting to put things in the shop and everything and I make gifts and all that, I'm trying to rein myself in. But I thought that this block, okay, this is six and a half, so either six and a half size or even smaller, maybe a five and a half inch or three and a half inch. But to do it in these solids, this is the Moda Bella solids. So to use these solids with the white background, how pretty would that be to have either a just a little mini wall hanging or the sewing machine mat or something like that that would be so cool oh an insulin pump too connie that would be good too just in the middle doesn't work that well to thank you so much for letting us know Yes, yes, Jackie, but when she rides in a car, does a seat belt touch it? Because the poor pillow is just to cushion you while you're riding in a car because the seat belt rubs up against it, especially when you first get it, it's so tender. That's what I figured, Denise. So many of you guys have told me you either fall asleep to me talking at night, and that took a little bit of getting used to that I put people to sleep, but I totally understand because... I do something similar. I listen to The Good Witch. She puts me to sleep at night because it's just a calm, mellow show. And then others of you, I like, you guys tell me, you know, I keep you company when you're doing stuff. Yes, Rosemary. And the way I started this channel is I wanted it to be so many of us you're either crafting at two in the morning or like me, I don't have anyone nearby to craft with. And if I do, it's like I worked at night and people work during the day, so I never could get together with people. Now this is my job, so it's a little different, but if we can't get together in this room physically, sit down at this table with everyone, we can do it virtually and it'll be just like friends because if you sat here with me, I would ramble on from conversation to conversation and I know many of you would do the same thing. You can make a lot of the port pillows. They go by super quick and you can do it as in like an in-between sewing. You can cut them all out and then have them on your sewing table next to you in a basket and then just work through them in between projects. Maybe like I like to have a warm up project in the morning. If I'm not doing administrative computer work first thing in the morning and I want to start sewing at 7, 8 in the morning, I need a project to loosen up my fingers and stuff. So I might just sew some scraps together. So the port pillows like that can be like leader enders where you just kind of warm yourself up. And at the end of the day, maybe you have 20 minutes left before you have to close up the shop area to go make dinner or whatever. So then maybe you can just whip out a couple then. It just, it works out really well that way. All right, before we get going, I'm going to refresh this video just to make sure I'm not missing any of the comments because I usually have to do that. I'm going to put my fabric away. <clears throat> I 
as I'm working through some of my recent whips, I don't want to start a new one and end up having, you know, too many projects sitting over on the side waiting for me to work on them. All right. There's top chat. So if, make sure if you're chatting up at the top, let me bring over my laptop a little bit so you can see. Come on. All right, so when you're in the chat, Right above it, it says top chat. You want to click on that. Sorry if it's blurry, but you get the basic idea. If you click on that little arrow, it shows top chat and live chat. You want to click on live chat. So that way you're seeing all of it. So top chat are the ones that the YouTube things are most popular or something like that. I don't know. So you want to make sure you're watching all the live chat coming through because otherwise you'll get half of a conversation and you'll miss half and you'll be like, what are they talking about? I like the company. It gets harder for me on the weekends. I have to go back and find old videos or listen to audio books or like Hallmark movies because there isn't a lot going on on YouTube on the weekends. So I need something to fill up my 12 hours each day on Saturday and Sunday. Aw, thank you, Becky. That's very sweet. No, this is, it's going to be when we make, we're going to make it in this, in this gray and this red fabric, and we're going to do that. But first I wanted to make the six and a half and the 12 and a half, just to remind myself, I haven't made this block in a long time. I've been making flying geese a lot with my patrons, my patrons. So if you're going to do the 12 and a half inch block, you can put any six and a half inch block in there. I put all the measurements down below in the description box. This is the six and a half inch one and that center square is three and a half inches. So you could put a crumb block inside there if you want and use that in the center. You can put a little tiny three and a half inch string block. I just talking about strings. So you could put anything. And the way we're going to do it today is we're going to be making these parts are on the stars, the star points. They're all precise. We did wonky stars before. Oh, I'm missing something. What is Heather doing? Okay, is Heather someone besides Heather? I don't see Heather. Come on, you guys. I know you talk without me, and that's perfectly fine, but I just wanted to know what they're doing. Deb, the free quilter, you're Heather. Thank you. All right, I've interrupted the entire stream trying to catch up on side conversations. Heather's causing tr trouble. Yes, she is. Thank you guys for helping me out. First of all, I'm terrible with names, and I forget it all the time unless I hear it all the time. But at least you guys are here to remind me. But we are going to make flying geese for these. These are very precise, unlike the wonky star where we can just use our scraps up and do whatever. There are many of these online where you're going to do the four at a time, no waste flying geese. I chose to make regular flying geese for two reasons. One, I like to make flying geese. And two, for each of these points, we're going to get a bonus half square triangle. So that works out really well. So maybe on the smaller ones, if you don't want to waste anything, because I didn't get any bonus ones off of that. The corners were too small. You could also make this with half square triangles and you would have the same thing. You'll still get the flying geese result. But I like to have the bonus half square triangles. This was the first way I learned and I did do the four at a time. I'm thinking we'll do a extra video coming up soon with how to do the four at a time flying geese. I better write that down so I don't forget. Four at a time, flying geese. There are so many ways to make flying geese. And everyone has their favorite. Oh, Lisa's a troublemaker too? 
Okay, now troublemakers, you guys have fun. As you're all behaving. I don't mind at all. Do your side chats. But if anyone has a question as we're going through, if you put it in all capitals, it'll be easier for the moderators and myself to catch it. That way everyone can have their side chats and you can still get your question answered. If I don't answer it right away, just please say it again because chances are I look down at the exact moment you asked your question because that's how it always works. I have my design board. I found that using the design board is really helpful this, for this block because it's made with rectangles here and squares. And it's not like a normal nine patch where each section is... Mickey. Hi, Mickey. Each section is not the exact same size. So we are going to start with the six and a half inch block first so that we can put that in the center and just see what it looks like with this project. So I think that's a great way to use up the two blocks so you have a little bit of each. As again, the directions, the measurements are down below in the description box, but we're gonna need one, where am I? One center that is three and a half by three and a half. And then we have corners. We're going to have our four corners. And the corners are two by two because we are making a smaller block. It's going to be bigger for our 12 and a half inch, of course. And then our flying geese are two by three and a half. So we have these rectangles in here. And to make our little stitch and flip flying geese corners, we're going to need eight two by two squares. Now with our two by two squares, they're going to be going on the corners here. And on all eight of these, and you're gonna know which one to do because there's only eight, no one else has eight, we're gonna draw a line corner to corner. With the smaller block, I'm only drawing one line. But when I do it for my larger block, because I wanna get those bonus half square triangles, I have to draw the lines. I can't just sew willy-nilly. I drew a line right down the center, corner to corner. Hello, Rich. How you doing? I don't know where that accent came from. And then I drew another line a half inch away from that center line. So we're going to be stitching on this line and that when we get to the 12 and a half inch block. You can do the same thing if you want for these little blocks, but it's going to be a really small half square triangle. So we're going to have all of these. And when we do these, we are going to lay out just one side at a time. But when we do them, we're going to make a mountain. So you want to have your line so that they're going this way and it creates that mountain look. I find that's the easiest way for me to remember how they go because you don't want to have one going in one direction and then you know so that they're both going the same like that we want them going to where they meet in the center at the top and i will draw a line on one i did most of them as you can see and to draw the line it's super simple you can use any re writing utensil that you like i like to use a friction just so that it goes away I take my really bright neon Missouri Star ruler here and I just line it up so that I can draw a line corner to corner. When I draw a line corner to corner, I do line my ruler up so that it's almost exactly just a thread away from the corner to corner. If you put your pen on directly like this, because the pens are different widths all the way up, you're going to possibly you're possibly going to make a line that is away from your ruler so if this is my ruler line and i put it right on that black line if i take my pen i draw straight up and down of course it's hard to see and it's only a little bit different that it's right next to it but when you're making things like flying geese you really need to be close to precise No, Ella, we're going to sew directly on this line when we make our flying geese. We're going to sew directly here 
And we're basically going to snowball it. We're going to sew directly on the line and then a half inch away, a quarter inch, sorry, stop for a second. Sew directly on the line and then a quarter inch away, we're going to trim this off so that we can fold this back like that. So then on this section, if we draw our second line a half inch away, because we need a quarter inch seam allowance for each of our pieces of our block. So if we do it like this, and we stitch directly on this line and directly on this line, and then we cut it down the center, we'll have a half square triangle and we'll have our little stitch and flip flying geese. Does that make sense? Excellent. So let me make sure I have everybody here. You go there. And you're going to go there. This can go up here. I find it's best to stay organized so we can, so can see what I'm doing. Bring you a wee bit closer. I'm sewing on my brother, not because I want to take a chance of it getting struck by lightning, but we have a lot of storms coming through every afternoon, and we get um, lightning that just shows up without the storm. So I don't want to take any chances of having my Juki plugged in. But you know, sewing machines don't matter. I just I always get questions of which sewing machine I'm using and why I'm not using the other one. You can pin these if you'd like. I tend to just set them up next to my sewing machine. So we're gonna draw, we're gonna sew directly on that line, 2.0 stitch length. Hi Jody, you're easily distract, dis distracted. All right, everyone's gonna have to have a little forgiveness for me today. Apparently, my hands are shaking and my tongue is a little bit thick, so <clears throat> I sure am gonna make mistakes. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a piece of scrap fabric that I put underneath just to start it. That's my version of a leader ender. When you're doing the flying geese, you wanna make sure that your blocks are lined up, your squares on top of that rectangle exactly. You don't want to have any of the fabric showing up one way or the other. So I, when I flip it over, I shouldn't see the gray. And when I'm on this side, I shouldn't see the red. That's going to allow me to get the exact sewing. Jody, you missed a lot of gossip time. I can't fill you in. I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't invited to the party. I was too busy over here just chatting with myself. So that's one of the little things to keep an eye on. Make sure you've got your line drawn directly down the center. Make sure you sew on that line and make sure your fabric is placed properly and it's not going over one way or the other. And then I'm just going to chain piece all of these. Another thing is, did you clean out your sewing machine lately? Do you have a bunch of buzz bunnies in there? Have you changed your needle lately? If you've been doing a lot of sewing or sewing on things like denim or leather or cork, you might need to have a new needle put in so it's nice and sharp. Everyone's playing catch up on their hellos. Some people like to sew just to the outside of the line they find that they get a better block that way. I used to do that, but the more I've been making these with my patrons, the more I've just been paying attention to what I'm doing and making sure I'm doing each step properly. Even if that means I have to slow down a little bit. Denise, are you watching two videos at the same time? It really get confusing, especially since it's my voice in both videos. And then I put another scrap fabric in. My 
little purple flower cutter. Before I take these over and I trim them up or anything, I want to double check. So here's my stitching line, and when I hope this one works, so when I fold it up, I want to make sure it's going to go up and be where it's supposed to be. If it's a little short, then you need to go ahead and rip the seam out. If it's gone so far that it shows up on the back like this, again, you need to rip out that seam and redo it because you're not going to have all your fabric in the right places and have everything line up properly. Hi, Mary. Hi, Patricia. I didn't see Patricia, but someone said hi, so I'll say hi. Make sure you plug your iron in and get it all started. And just so anyone who's new here, I don't want them getting nervous now or in the replay, but I have underneath here is a, is a pressing station. It's a big piece of wood from a TV dinner tray that I've got covered with batting and fabric. And then my wool mat, so there's no chance that the steam and the heat from using the wool mat is going to get through to my cutting board. Be very careful about that so I, I don't want to warp it at all. And I think I realized more, another reason why a lot of the people you see on YouTube are using that Panasonic cordless iron when they're doing their videos is simply because it's cordless. I'm kind of curious if they do it, at, use it at home. What do you think of the rechargeable irons? Marie, we've been talking about it with every live stream. I think I give a new little opinion on it every time. I think that while making videos, that this is a great tool. When I'm not making videos, I pull out this big bad boy. This is a Sunbeam. My son Justin bought this for doing his dress shirts. It's a professional steam. I like it because it's heavy. It holds more water, and it seems to press my blocks flatter this is great when I'm just doing quick videos here so I'm not getting tangled up in the cord. So I think it's great. I know, I'm just teasing you. You don't have to see all of them. So yeah, I see a lot of people like Jackie loves hers. And I, I used it for a while just to make sure, you know, do I love it or am I just not giving it enough time? And I think it's a great tool and I think it works really well for a lot of people. But for some of the projects that I'm working on, it just doesn't work for me. I need it to, even with the clapper and stuff, I need it to press my blocks flatter. When I'm doing things like, with these, there's a lot of seams that come together. It doesn't seem to work as well for me as the other irons I've had in the past. If I'm doing crumb blocks and stuff like that, I don't really care for it at all. I, I choose to use a different iron. Hi, Terry. So now a quarter inch from my stitching line to the outside, I'm going to trim off that little extra. You can just use scissors if you want. You can just hit it with this. I've gotten used to now using the ruler so that I, if I want to, I can save these little triangles for my triangle project. Make sure you only have one of the blocks. I don't want to turn it into a half square triangle but I do have a few art projects in mind. Next year, we're going to get more into what to do with all of the random thread that I saved. We're going to do a project with that. We're going to work on these triangles and the bonus half square triangles, all of those. I think I only told my patrons about this, but Missouri Star has their writing right here. So this ruler is two and a half inches. And because I hang it up on this hole, when I take it off, I lay it down on the mat. It's always this size. But you can't see any of the measurements because of their name. They put it in an inconvenient spot for me. Now, Jenny's left-handed, so for her, it would be perfectly fine. So it's great. That's me, Terry. I'm going to ramble on. I'll keep talking, and either people will leave, or I'll say enough things that eventually... I'll say something that people haven't heard before. That's always possible. So these are super small. 
That's why I don't do the bonus half square triangle with those. I am also testing out this cutter. This is the one that when you put your hand on it, the blade comes out. When you let go, the blade goes back in. You can press the little red button and keep it out. I use these on videos so that when I'm talking, it's all safety here and I don't hit it accidentally. Oh no. Right, so our next step will be to press these to the outside. We'll do the just get it done quilt, so little trick of finger pressing it first. And I mention that because first of all, she's the one that taught me it. And I had the hardest time with pressing my blocks and getting the fabric to be just right until that little trick. And just that simple bit of I have to be careful because each iron has the steam in a different spot. One has it here and one has it there. I have to stop and think. But just that little tip of putting, folding it over with your fingers first has made such a huge difference for me. My blocks actually come out right now. So that's a big game changer. Now you watch Just Get It Done Quilts and how many times has she been like me and rambling on and on you hear nothing new then all of a sudden you get that one thing and you're like, oh, that's that one little tip that I needed to make things work out properly. So that's why a lot of times I will just be doing my stuff and they're kind of background noise. I don't really listen to it that much. And then you get that nice little tip and that, that's just a game changer, you know? Now I'm gonna do the same thing again, but I'm going to do it on this side. And I'll remember, we're going to have it so that we have the mountain. If you'd like, you can press this one open. I found that it wasn't that big a deal for me. I was able to press my seams around because the center square did not have, the center square on this one is, it's just one piece of fabric. So I was able to press it all to the center. So maybe when we do the big one, we might have to press them open. I think it's great when we can all just hang out like this and just listen to people chat. So make sure you have that I, oh, and I, I inevitably always put it in the wrong way. And I've also learned a new trick that when I start doing the sewing the block together, I'll show you. It's such a simple little trick that has made a huge difference for me. You guys know many times like when I did the 3D pinwheel and I kept flipping the blocks around and spinning them the wrong way and I just couldn't get them to lay right. That's because when I pick them up, I tend to spin things around. So I figured out just a simple little trick for myself to solve that problem. When I stitch this, I'm just reading everything. Yeah, that's all you need, Rich. You just need a simple piece of wood that's nice and clean and, and smooth, sanded down and stuff. This is just fancy version. It has the nice little cutouts here. I think now that I have this one, and this is the only one I've ever used, the big one and the little one, these are both from Riley Blake. I think I'm just really, I would find it to use a different block would feel awkward to me, only because I used this one first. Not that it's any better than anyone else's. I do like the fact that there's something to grab onto here with the little routered outsides, but some people put a handle on theirs and it's easy to pick up that way too. But those can be quite expensive and if you can just use a piece of scrap wood, then I say go for it. I'm pretty sure you can go to Lowe's. Well, I know you can go to Lowe's and get some scrap wood, and they'll even cut it to size for you, but you might even find something at Hobby Lobby. So when I do this, I sew from this part at the top. I never sew from this point where the corner is. It's really easy for this to get sucked down into the feed dog, so if I have the opportunity to sew from up there, I will. Just make sure again that everything is lined up nicely. Next year, I am making a, 
a flying geese quilt. Just one quilt with all flying geese. So I know two quilts that I'm going to be making is a spider web and the flying geese quilts. And I don't, I've made many quilts this year. I made, oh, I made one for my daughter last year, but I haven't made a quilt in a while. And then stitch right on the line. Sometimes we have to stop and think about it for a second, just like when the surgeons, I, you know, I don't know, I'll equate myself to a surgeon sometimes, but they stop before they cut into you for a surgery, no matter what it is, they stop and they think about what they're going to do and they say it out loud so everyone agrees. So sometimes you have to think, okay, did I get this position properly? Am I sewing it correctly? Do I have it all lined up? Because it's easy to seam rip, sure, but it's even easier not to make a mistake if you can avoid it. And if you need to put pins in, I say put pins in. I usually use them for the bigger quilt blocks, but not the smaller ones. Notebook as a clapper. Yeah, it's some of them irons are so expensive. I used to have a oh, Walgreens. I used to just go and get old iron from Walgreens. They used to be five dollars and ten dollars. Now I think they're like twenty-five dollars, but still. I drop mine. I put water in mine, so mine's not gonna last two, three years anyway. I tried the spray bottle and it's it doesn't work the way I want it to. I can go and pick one up at Goodwill. A lot of times you can get a brand new one in the box at a thrift store. People buy an iron thinking they're going to iron their clothes and then they change their mind. Buy something inexpensive. I found that Bed Bath & Beyond has them for a reasonable price for a pretty good iron. You had a brand new iron in the box for years? Once you make your first block, just to see how this goes, you can always do a bunch of chain piecing. Pile them all up on top of your, your little quilt board so that you know exactly which one's going where. And then you can make several blocks at the same time and you can really make a quilt with these stars pretty quickly. So again, I'm just going to double check to make sure it's going to be fine. It looks good. Press it open, press it to the side, whichever one works for you. Sometimes I will do the same on all the blocks and sometimes I'll change up halfway through or this time around I will do this, next time I will press them open. I almost forgot a step. Some things make me a little bit nervous about buying things used, but I think irons are usually pretty good. You're going to keep an eye on it. You shouldn't be leaving the room with your iron plugged in anyway. Quarter inch from the stitching line. Ruler, scissors, eyeball it, whichever works for you. And really, you can do whatever you want if it works for you. I'm not in your sewing room with you, and... When you look at my blocks, you can't tell if I cut it with scissors or with a, a rotary cutter, if I did it exact or not. Nobody's going to know. The seams are inside your quilt. You can do whatever works for you and not feel bad about it. Oh, Lisa. I have to be really careful. If you noticed, we haven't chosen any difficult blocks because I can't, if it's a block I have to think about, then I can't, I just, I can't. Now this part here, because I forgot to press it over. You know, a lot of times you see, like Jenny from Missouri Star, she just hits it with her iron and stuff like that. This little 
cordless iron, I can't do that. I think the little lip around the edge is too thick and too rounded for me to just hit it. Like if I was doing two jelly roll, jelly roll strips together, this part on the plate, it's super rounded and thick and very hot. I don't want to touch it. Yeah, so many of you guys do uh, Zoom meetings when you sew and a lot of the knitters and stuff like that, and they, they just go crazy. I've never used the serger. When I was making clothes, I wanted one, but I, mean, I just did an overlock stitch with my machine. I think with this iron, if you have the combination of this iron and a wool mat and the little clapper, then I think your block is gonna get nice and flat. I've just been able to get my block super flat when using this wool mat, excuse me, that I'm just being a little particular now. I've seen a lot of people, they make quilts with sergers. I've seen them do like quilt as you go and stuff like that. All right, so our block started out as a two by three and a half inch rectangle. So it should still be two by three and a half inches. Two by three and a half. I have to tell you, this has been like the best year for me when it comes to quilt blocks and everything. It only took me a couple of months and then I really like nailed it. I got my quarter inch seam, my half square triangles look good, my flying geese look good. I used to make these and there'd be like parts sticking out here and this part would be crooked and I think it's just so great. Oh yeah, Frankie piece batting, that would be good too. Hi Inga. Okay, so let me see. We are working, put it on the quilt board. So now these are going to go, when we put these in, we want to have whatever our center square is, we want to have it touching so that's what creates our star. It's a little bit different than a nine patch. So when I sew mine together, I still kind of do it the same. Some people will do it in rows, some will do it in columns. Some people will do like this, this four section here and do weird stuff. So I think the way I did those other two, I just flopped these two over. I wanna show you a little bit on this one, but I'm gonna show you more when we get into the bigger block. Let's see if we get up close here. You really love my fancy uh, photography, videography skills here. I just bring it up closer to you. When we sew this and we flip it open, we want to make sure that when we do this, we don't want to lose our points here. We don't want them to get sucked into the seam. So one of the things we need to be careful for is how we made our flying goose geese how we trimmed it, how we pressed it, and then when we sew it, you see how there's that X right there from the threads going this way and that way? You could put a pin in it, you can just sew it freehand, but when we do this, we wanna go through and our quarter inch should go right through that X, and that's gonna allow it to open up and then we will have that point right there. So that'll give us our perfect flying geese point. So that's why sometimes if you press it open, it's hard to see that little X. Sometimes I press one leg open and then the other I press to the side. So that first one that I put on, I'll press open. And then after that, I'll press it to the side. Yeah, it seems to be quite hit and miss with sergers for all the years that I've been chatting online and stuff people either love them and use it all the time but majority of people don't so now we're going to switch over to our quarter inch seam allowance so 
sometimes I get, was it this number or that number? So I will double check just to make sure. Okay, that's my quarter inch. Make sure I have everything right, okay. I hear so many car doors now and they're never here for me, which is fine because I don't need the company, but it always sounds like they're right outside. So again, make sure it's lined up. Use your pins or your clips if you need to. Quarter inch. Then this one I pay close attention to. Now, if you're a little bit off and your quarter inch, you notice that it's going to come down, your quarter inch might be down a little on the gray, and then you might have to just you know, run it up just a little bit to make sure you get through that. Even if this point here has a little bit less seam allowance than the rest of the block, then at least you won't be losing your point. If it's really bad, well, then you gotta decide are you gonna use that block as is. If it's the only block in a pillow, you might wanna redo it. But if it's the one block in a king size bed that loses its points, then maybe it doesn't bother you as much. Serger, 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 okay, nobody for me. We're happy. Oh, when I say that, please, um, like I said, you guys chat away, have fun. I'll be over here working. You guys just have fun without me. And I'll just go slow and make sure that I'm gonna go through that X if I have to wiggle it a little bit. And then I finish it off. And go to my next one. Just like with any block, the smaller it is, the harder it is. You know, when it gets bigger, it's easier. Okay. Then I lay it back out on my board so I'm not getting anything mixed up. Now, if I were to be spinning everything around and moving it, now this, I found this block I'm pretty okay with. I don't have a problem. But my next piece I wanna sew is this one on here. And to keep me from getting it all mixed up, it makes total common sense to put a pin in it or something, but to make sure I sew that seam properly, I'll go ahead and put a clip in it. And that way, I know you guys are, I'm just teasing. Oh, bias binding, mm. I actually like it. Bias binding is a little fun. It is a little nerve wracking. And then you just have to be, once you cut it and get it sewn together, you just have to be really careful what you're pressing and you don't stretch it or anything like that, but it's pretty fun. By the large cones, yep, okay. So by putting that clip on, I find it so much easier. Now with this block, since the way I did it, and this is a longer piece here because you have two than this. I just spin it around this way so that I can sew those on. So I only have one little square on the top. Oh, forgot to cut it. I only have the one square on the top and I don't have it on the bottom with all those extra pieces. So let me make sure I go there, there. Oh, the serger threads. I have no knowledge. I want to say you can do it with two, right? I know I've bought the big thread cones for it and used it here on my sewing machine. Like Jody says, it's a really great deal to get serger thread like that and just use it. Sometimes for a special quilt, I might be very particular about my fabric and my thread. And other ones, I'm just like, whatever I have is fine. I go slow through that X and then, you know, whatever. So by doing this now, I'm like, if I'm putting a whole bunch of blocks together, if I was making this into a wall hanging or a quilt, they would be in the right order. I don't have to worry as much. I still take a picture with my phone. But now I find that after I sew it together, I don't go, oh, I twisted that one or I spun that one around. right now.
And if you do a bunch of chain piecing, it also keeps you from having get up constantly to iron. I know some of you guys have an ironing station right next to your sewing machine. That doesn't quite work for me. It's better if I get up. I haven't used a twin needle yet either, speaking of two threads. I want to try that. All right, I just hit the reconnect. Hopefully everyone's coming back. I lost you guys. Okay, is everyone coming back? Hopefully we're all coming back. I'm trying. Okay, if it goes out one more time, I'll switch over to my home internet and see if that helps. Yeah, I just want to make you guys so, because you can't hear me, I want to make sure you know that I'm working on it. Okay. All right, so here we have it. Make sure you have all of your stars see now how this one here is wrong so then we need to make sure we turn it around yeah what's aggravating is when we have no control over it you know if i do something oh, that looked weird for a second if i do something wrong when i'm making a block and i'm trying to show it to you it's like crazy so mother nature yeah mother nature we've been having they told us wednesday through friday it's going to be really bad in the afternoon and i can see the black sky about five or ten miles away from me it's coming up in all four directions so now that I have my seams and they're nested, and in case you guys don't know what a nesting the seam is, because sometimes you're new, I have this seams going to the left and this seams going to the right. This is one of those things you have to feel. I can kind of sort of show you, but when you feel it, you'd be like, oh. So because this creates a lump right here and a lump on the opposite side, when I put these together and I give my fingers a little wiggle squiggle, they nest together and they lock into place. And you want to be able to do that. So where did I put my pins? I thought about doing a video about pins, but I really don't have a high knowledge of pins. And I don't know which ones I own, to be honest with you. So, But I have these glass head pins. I watched a quilting video a long time ago. And they said, if you're going to use pins in your quilting blocks, you need to have a fine pin. So it needs to be really thin. If you use one of those ones that most of us started with, with that yellow plastic ball on it, first of all, that's not heat resistant. A glass one I can iron right over, but it's thin enough that it's... All right, guys, we're on home internet. Let's see if that helps any, okay? Okay. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully I've been in the view so you guys can see what I was doing. Now, if I was chain piecing this, I would just go ahead and do a bunch of these and chain piece it. But since I only have this one block and it's almost 4 o'clock and the storm's coming and we don't want to be here forever, I'm going to pin both of them because I can sew one side, flip it around and sew the other and just save myself a little bit of time. So remember to get those seams nested. And then again, if you want, you can put one in for your flying goose point. Now, we won't see any fall weather here until almost Halloween. They, Northern Florida had a cold front. That was exciting for them. We haven't seen one yet. They usually stop. Tampa is about two, two and a half hour drive north of us. And that's usually where the cool front stop before they ever get to us. I'm going to refresh because 
I changed the internet and I don't think I can see everybody. Hopefully everybody came back and is able to find us, no problem. I just sew my little quarter inch. Removing your pins is not good to sew over them for a variety of reasons. Again, I'm not sitting there looking over your shoulder. If you sew over your pin, I will never ever know unless you tell me. And if you tell me, I'll be like, okay, if it works for you. My grandmother told me, my grandparents raised me from age 2 to 13, and my grandmother told me, that um well first of all it's none of my business what anyone does but if whatever they do in their life makes them happy then who who am i to say they're doing it wrong or they shouldn't be doing that or whatever that if sewing over a pin or eating twinkies make you happy then hey So on this side, so sometimes you can take advantage of a little bit of bias and stretch that you might have, and if things aren't in the exact right spot, you can give it a little bit of a stretch and sew the seam and then let it just settle back down. And I'm not saying, you know, to give it a big one and to, you know, do a lot of tugging and pulling, but you can ease in a little of the extra fabric and you can stretch it if it doesn't reach all the way to the end of the block. Fabric does have that little bit of give, thank goodness. It does work in our favor sometimes and other times it doesn't. You just don't want to have weird curves from stretching it and you don't want to have pleats from having too much. And if the block comes out funky, put it on the back of a quilt or make it for a little dowel blanket and somebody will love it and their little kids aren't going to care if it's one way or the other. What do you look for the quilting police? A little steam to set it, and then I'm going to press it into the gray area. You can press this one open, of course, because we're going to have the, the little extra seams there on the edge. So this will go this way. This will go this way. This is this iron is pretty light, so a lot of people who have problems with arthritis and stuff with their hands and arms, they like it. Now I like a good heavy iron. And for a while there I didn't because of my bad shoulders, but now that knock on wood, they're reasonably under control. I like a good heavy iron. Hi Nana. Oh, from Singapore. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. I have to say something here. Every guy, everyone, you guys are always so great about always welcoming people, and I thank you so much. If you can hear my voice and you said hello and nobody welcomed you, Please don't feel bad. It's not you. Sometimes people get in the middle of a conversation and your hello, you know, hi, I'm Robin from Florida snuck in and we didn't see it. It's not that we don't like you and we don't want you to feel unwelcome. Sometimes we just don't see your comment. So say hi again. Jump in the middle of the conversation with everyone. People are very friendly here and sometimes, as I said, they just didn't see you. So please don't feel unwelcome. We love everybody here, even the wild and crazy ones that talk too much, right? All right, so, bye Marie. Here is my six and a half inch block. I can take my little six and a half inch ruler, double check to make sure everything is looking good. I gotta say, it is so exciting. Now it's not perfect, maybe there's a little smidge extra here and a little bit short there, but it is close enough to be used. It feels so good not to have a six and a quarter inch block. 
it's very exciting. I get super excited and even today, you know, when I was sewing them earlier, I got so excited that they actually came out right. They don't always come out right and I'm just so happy to see them. Nailed it. Crazy is subjective, yes. So here is the center. If I were to make, I thought I would do opposites, have the gray star and then have a red star, but we're gonna put this in the center. I think it would be really fun. I saw some on Pinterest or just by Googling it where they were all scrappy. They didn't have like white backgrounds or gray backgrounds. This one was like yellow here and blue there. You just wanna have a high contrast. It doesn't really matter what your colors are. So then we put our flying geese here so we know those are gonna go there. So whatever you have, just that lone six and a half inch block that you have left over from a quilt, you can go ahead and put that there. Here are my four corner blocks. I thought that this would be fun. All right, hold on. Here are my four corner blocks. I thought this would be fun in um, like black and whites or have a black background and like change up the color or whatever you're doing. If you're just using like the whites or the grays and you just have your background that's either the center or the outside, just change it up. But I thought a black and white quilt with a bunch of different colors would be really fun. I tried to control myself until I get through more whips. So I already drew I already drew the double line. When you draw the double line, make sure your bonus half square triangle line is going to go to the outside. I just have to draw on one. I usually draw it after I've sewn the first one, but I thought this time I'd be a little different. So if it confuses you, just draw the one line and then you can always draw the other one later. So I, then I got my corner to corner. I put my pen sideways so that it's not straight up and down and it's going to cause any issues with the shape of my pen. Then I go over the half an inch. I'll draw my next line. That's going to go on there. All right, everyone's crazy. That works for me. Just double check to make sure I didn't need to answer any questions. If you have any questions, it might be good to get them in now in case we do get a bit of a storm. We don't want to miss out on you. Or you can always email me later. So if you're watching on the replay, you can leave a comment. But com oh, comments don't come up for like the first 24 hours, usually on the replay. And I, someone brought it to my attention. and I haven't been checking lately because I forgot. But the live streams, YouTube chooses the comments, uh, the uh, ads, where the ads go and what ads are placed. And on last live stream, there were 32 ads. They were placed like every two to five minutes apart. So if you come through and you're watching your replay and you see a bunch of ads, you can let me know and I can try to get rid of some of them. Hopefully YouTube will keep them the way I set it up, but I can't do anything for like 24 hours. So if you watch this right away, I apologize for any of the ads that might be there. Back to drawing, uh, to drawing, to sewing on the center line, making sure everybody's behaving. So with these bigger blocks, you might want to pin these totally up to you. Sometimes it's helpful for a block that needs to be particular. stop and think for a second to make sure I did it right. I don't mind ads, but some of the ads were super long. So she was getting some of the ads, you know, you get like an entire TV show episode for a 35 minute ad or ad or an hour and 15 minutes. But then every time I would talk and start saying something, okay, there was an ad. 
I, then I start explaining something, oh, there's an ad. So they interrupt the conversation. It just makes it so hard to watch TV or a YouTube video. So if you see that, let me know, and I can go through and at least fix it for now for you to watch it. Hopefully it stays fixed. I do find it interesting what YouTube thinks I might want for ads. Lately they've been nailing it right on, but I think that's because I've been doing more Googling of certain things lately. But sometimes they just, they'll put something weird out. Like I'm not a man that needs to have anything fixed, if you know what I mean. And they start doing that. I've been getting, apparently I must think because I've been getting a lot of those Lumi deodorant commercials here and on Instagram. second I just have to get rid of the comments so I can see so if anything happens and anyone has to leave or whatever we're just gonna sew this out around together just like we did with this one or I should say with this one the only thing different is instead of having a plain square here in the center we have this you can put like a nine patch in there you can put a little embroidered piece in there, whether it's machine or hand, or if you have like an emblem on a t-shirt, like maybe for a t-shirt quilt where they always have that little thing over the pocket, you can put that in the center here. I know a lot of people are always using, trying to figure out how to use up leftover pieces from t-shirt quilts and stuff. How sweet would it be to have this six and a half inch block of photograph for like your, your parents or grandparents 50th anniversary or for a baby quilt to put all the family members on there. Oh my goodness. They're everywhere. Maybe it also depends on how many videos you've already watched and seen ads for. I always recommend to Watch other videos first before you watch a live stream or a long video. So if you're watching someone and their video is longer than an hour, you should watch a couple other videos first. That way YouTube will already give you ads and then they won't give you any or as many during the longer videos because they don't want you to leave the site. They want to do whatever they can to make sure you stay on YouTube. So they don't want to, they know too many ads will scare people away they get frustrated oh I forgot can't do this yet I have to do that second line so now I'm going to take this through the sewing machine and I'm going to sew directly on that bonus half square triangle line this is going to give me a two and a half inch half square triangle and then as you saw, I have, because you have eight of them on there, you're going to get eight of them. So if you're doing an entire quilt, you can get a second quilt out of all the bonus half square triangles. So you can just chain piece through. These we're going to trim a little bit. So, oh, I put this one on the wrong way. If I had sewn on that line, that would have been a problem. See, that's where when I get chatting, and I can't say it's just from chatting with you guys because I make mistakes all on my own, sitting here by myself with nobody. No ads for kids programs, that's nice. Oh, here they don't do ads either because for YouTube they had to do that whole rule thing when everyone got in trouble. So if it's a kid's channel, you can't, or viewed by kids, you can't have ads, you can't have comments. A lot of people had to figure different things out. It's nice for the viewer though.
cooking with gas. That's what my grandmother always said. Now nah, you're cooking with gas. You can put it on as an after quilt backing, but I just save them. I have a container of hash bar triangles, all different sizes. If I were making an entire quilt with this, I would use these and make a second quilt with it. I wouldn't put it on the back. I would get a whole other quilt out of it. Because it's not taking you hardly any time at all to sew those and to trim them up and everything like that. Trimming up a half square triangle, yes, but trimming off of here, no. And then you can always put, you can make pinwheels. You can put solid fabric with it, solid squares to make it stretch a little further. So now you're going to cut in between. It's a quarter inch from either one. So I just measure or you can guess. My guesstimations aren't always that great. So yes. When I was just using scissors or guesstimating, some of them I would have an eighth of an inch. Some of them would be, you know, a little bit wider then. This doesn't take me, but not even if it does take any extra time, a second extra to line it up and give it a cut. You guys ever had the rotary cutter in your hand and have your nose itch and then go up with it to your face? I almost just did that. You think the comments are back on the kids' channels? I, I only one I watch is, um, this is how we bing them, and I haven't seen any commercials. Oh, comments. Comments are hit and miss, they said. Yeah, sometimes you'll see comments and sometimes you don't. When the live is over, it takes a while for it to upload onto YouTube, and that's why these comments right here are missing. So if someone asks a question or says something fun, I try to read it out loud so that the people on the replay can figure it out, which I don't always do a good job at because I forget, but that's, you know, human. And then we just press these over just like we did on the other ones. So when you come back, if all right, so today's Friday, even though I thought it was Saturday all day. But when you come back on, let's say, Sunday or Monday, you'll be able to follow along the conversation. Sometimes it's up right away, but it's usually at least 24 hours to see the live chat comments. Oh, I know. That's why I was really careful. It took me a second. I'm like, I've never done that before, but I'm like, why would you want to do that? It's right up there with having a pot holder on your right hand, and when you go to take the cookies out of the oven and you use your left hand, it's crazy. So here are... Well, that's interesting, right? Okay, that's why that one line was weird. I did that one wrong. But that's okay. I'll just do it on this side. Excuse me, and it'll be just as fine. It's not a big deal. I think that's the first time I've ever done that. Again, it's not like an issue, but I just never had them backwards like that. All right, so then we're going to stitch down this line, and we'll go back through and stitch on the second one. You really use the information that some, yeah. Oh, yes, and when I go in the refrigerator, I always nick the top of my fingers on the shelf above it. I've had the same refrigerator, you know, knock on wood, for many, many years, and yet I still do it about every three days. It's hard, because a lot of people are, some people are watching the replay right now, before we even actually finish it. Hi, Kathy. Oh, the library, that's fun. No, nope, you're fine. There is no late or tardy here. You might want to go back and when the comments come up, though, and read. So the ladies and the gentlemen were having a lot of fun earlier, chit-chatting back and forth. I have threads all over me. All right, we're stitching right on the line, so we don't need any quarter-inch seam allowance. 
Yes, when you, there, underneath it'll say, um, like right now when you came in, you had you might have had to hit, click live chat for the chat window to pop open. If it's there, since I don't look at the screen, I usually just listen to videos, I don't pull up the replay chat, but it, it is nice every now and then. Sometimes I'll pull it up when someone asks a question and I heard the answer and it, it, it's something random and I'm like, what were they talking about? And I go back and check. I haven't chosen the block for next month. What are we in? We're in September, so October. I haven't chosen our block yet for October, so if anyone has any suggestions, as you can see, we're doing simple ones that don't take a lot of time to make because of it being on the live stream. I wanted to do the bear paw, but I thought that might be a little bit much. Now that we've done the flying geese, we can find a few more. We're not going to be doing blocks next year with our live streams. We're going to do... catch up on our whips and just work on a variety of things. There is a couple of um, a couple of blocks that have like the flying geese that go in circles and stuff, the different paper pieced ones. Those might be fun to do. Maybe we'll do a vote on what project Robin has to work on or we'll do, maybe I'll number my whips and we'll pull a number or just put them all in a basket and pull them out. I have to find them all. There's a bunch in the fabric room. And of course I have almost all of these blocks. Some of them I've turned into a variety of things. And that was the main thing. I didn't want to turn mine into a quilt. I wanted to just have more knowledge with blocks and practice making them to get the quarter and seam and the pressing and the cutting and all of that. And then I wanted to use them for random projects. Ay ay ay. It's dark, dark, dark out there. Oh darn. I guess I won't be able to mow the yard this afternoon like I planned. Shucks, that's two days in a row now. My excuse for not mowing yesterday. Oh, Robin Suzanne. By the way, my middle name is Suzanne. The reason for not mowing yesterday, I couldn't mow at 4 p.m. yesterday because I had a live stream today at 3 and I didn't want to be too tired. So that, that's a good excuse, right? Hello to anyone new that came in and I haven't seen yet, but everyone's saying hello back and forth, so I'll just do a generalized hello everyone. I always forget the bonus ones, even by myself. But I used a Frixion pen, so that's what caught my eye every time I see that line. Stop. And also, once we get out into the next year, we are going to be able to start doing random things. So we are going to do a uh, handmade paper. And is Jody still here? Jody just loves when I show this. Save your spool threads. This one's a Guterman. Save your spool threads. We're gonna start working on things like this. So bits of ribbon, some thread. You have a little bit of lace there. You know, we got little doodads. Save all of those things that you might come across or find at like a thrift store or something. Keep them in a little box and we're gonna do some art quilts and we're gonna do the little doodads and we're gonna make some, we'll make tassels and we'll make little pins and stuff that you have like, almost like stitch markers for knitting where you have a bunch of beads on it then with like a wire or something so that we can add it to our, our art quilt and things like that. So 
the little beads, embroidery floss, all the little doodads we're going to be using. Nope, we're going to make them exactly like yours, Jody. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Let me set my seams. Iron works left handed and right handed. Ba -dum -bum. All right, so then we're going to cut the bonus one off. Spin it around six times, Robin. And we'll sew those into, I'll show you how to trim them up and everything after we get this block done, as long as the world is still good and I have power and all that. You just never know, especially in this part of this Florida and this neighborhood and stuff. There's a food pantry that I go to once a month that's a half mile up the road at a local school. And I was standing in line outside on Wednesday and we were all praying that there wouldn't be any lightning or we wouldn't get soaked and wet but half mile up the road here my house lost power while I was gone so when I got home the power had gone off because my stove was blinking and stuff like that and I thought that's crazy have you ever used triangles on a roll Jackie now Jackie my goodness let me just tell you that's on my list for next year what do I have I have Triangles on a roll. Uh, someone sent this to me from my wish list on Amazon. Triangles on a roll, half square triangles, one and a quarter finished half square triangles. I thought this was going to be really exciting to use. I thought it was scrappy, but you have to use strips. So I have to play with it a little bit to see how I can do it with just scraps. But yes, that is on our list for next year. We're going to do totally random stuff. I have rulers that I've never used that were sent to me and that I have myself personally. So we're gonna try different rulers out. You're just never gonna know what you're gonna catch on the live or on the replay. So that's gonna be something that's gonna be looking, something to look forward to. Bye Heather. And then this oddball. Now these are, let me look, let me look. Three and a half by six and a half. So we need to make sure that that's what they are close enough or we might need to trim them up. If yours are coming out wonky and they need extra trimming and not just a little smidge, then you really need to kind of look at what you're doing and see where you're getting off on because something is happening. Bye, Becky. Hello, Inherent Stitches. And six and a half inch ruler. That iron does make a lot of noise. It does make a lot of steamy noise. And when it beeps, when it goes to sleep, oh boy, that is a loud beeper. See, I just can't help it. You're not supposed to, you know, be too proud and stuff like that. But I just get so excited to have mine come out close enough to be considered, I consider it perfect enough. Here is our center square. Here is our corners. Now hopefully that one wasn't goofy on me. I just did it a little bit, a little bit differently. So this, I was curious to see how much we would be able to see. Let me look through here. But I'm sorry guys, I've had you guys not quite in the screen. My apologies. Oh, that's kind of cool. I wasn't sure if we were gonna be able to see that second star. happy but you shouldn't be like overly proud of yourself I mean it's good to have pride yes but you know you shouldn't just be oh look how great I am I'm so awesome and I never want to say like oh look I made a perfect flying geese what's wrong with you how come you can't make a perfect flying geese 
because it's taken me a while and I had to get it through my thick head that you have to follow. There, There's no quilt police, but there are some rules that we have to follow. Thank you, Jody. You know, we have to, we have to follow some guidelines and stuff to get things to work out right for us. Now we're switching over to our quarter inch, which for my brother machine means I have to press buttons and make noise. There we go. Thank you, Rich. Oh, your iron? Oh, no, mine. Maybe it's the other one that makes a loud beach beep. One of them makes a super loud beep and it, it, it startles me every time. So if yours is quiet, then mine must be quiet too. It must be the other one that makes a loud beep. I do have to say I really appreciate having the cordless iron for these videos. I am not tripping over the cord and it's easy for me to you know, iron everything without having any issues. I don't have to plug the iron in over here and actually accidentally cut the cord. We have a lot of points in this section to pay attention to. I can see where mine is not. I'm gonna have to do a little. Okay, this is what I mean. So when I line mine up, probably needed to trim off that little bit. I'll double check first. But if I have that little bit that's short there, I'll just kind of line this up and let it because the feed dogs are going to pull at a different tension and you know how it pulls on the other one and stuff so let me just double check here the ones really I was right there's nothing to trim off so this goes like this I'll just hold it stretch it a little your red brownish fabric is growing on me. Oh, this? Yeah, this is, I think it's black, but you know, it sometimes shows up. Someone sent this to me and I wasn't really sure. It's, it's interesting. Oh, maybe you were, and like this one, this one I couldn't figure out what it is, but this one is balls of yarn. Both colors is the same fabric in two different colorways with balls of yarn. Oh, that was the strangest looking thing there for a while. I couldn't figure out what it was. I can feel the humidity dropping and the temperature changing. There we go. Oh, that's a big seam. Because of not pressing my flying geese open or anything, I do have some big clunky seams to go over, so I'm just going to go a little slow. There we go. This would be fun in batiks, in pastels, like the rainbow fabric I showed you before. sure everyone's still doing what they're supposed to and then I'll spin it around on purpose and sew it this way. I think the design board would be really helpful for if you're making a bunch of these blocks and stuff versus just one or two. to stop and stretch and move a little bit if you have your ironing station right next to you. You don't want to get your back all sore and your body stiff. Stop and get a glass of water. Don't forget to clean out your sewing machine. Put in new needles. Okay, so this seam right here is the one that gave me the big clunk a clunk so I have it right here. So I have all of that extra in there. So if these were pressed open, it would spread out that thickness a bit. So 
so that might be a good idea. If you had a smaller block, only three and a half inches, you could go ahead and put a border around it to bring it up to the six and a half inch size for the center of this block. You can use your bonus half square triangles that we're gonna make, put them in the center. Probably need to change the needle on this machine. I know I changed it on my Juki recently. So it might be good to have a little sticky note near your machine so you know when you change it or mark it on the calendar or do something so that you can keep up. Bye Becky. Keep up with um, when you change your needle and stuff. Or even when you clean your machine because sometimes you'll think, well I just cleaned my machine. But you're like, no, I guess it's been a long time. I didn't just clean it. So these are going to go to the outside because there's only one piece of fabric there. No extra seams. I think I'm going to work on some Advent stuff this weekend some things for my mother for Christmas and then of course whatever I make I'll also make similar for most of them to put it in the shop too I finished a mini quilt sewing machine mat while waiting for the live stream okay now this one go this way a really fun block you can use some really funky fabric and then just calm it down with a neutral look at that nope that didn't work That won't allow me to nest my seams, but you know what? Sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. Show what? The, the thing I finished this morning? I'll show you that after we do our bonus half square triangles if we're all still here. Sometimes I twist my seams on purpose just so that I can nest it and not have the seams going in all different crazy ways. And I've seen other people do it. I don't know if, I think it was, I think it was Jenny Doan who said she does it too. I can't remember if Quilt Vilvani did it too, but sometimes you just have to twist your seams on purpose. Just want to get this finished because I can hear all that storm rumbling out there. Just nesting my seam. get over on the other table of things that I need to, I have prepped to do eventually it's been nice so I'm like I don't know what to work on what should I work on what should I do oh well let me just look in that basket there's things for me to do in there oh yeah I like that I think having the sharp contrast has really been good makes a big difference See, look, we even survived the internet problems again. That was one of the things that had me so hesitant because I knew that my home internet wasn't the best, but I didn't know at the time that Verizon would be that horrible too. But when 
when the kids come home from school, they all get on the internet, especially on a Friday. Say, good luck. I should have sewn this from the other side. rainy season is almost over so we won't have to worry about the storms as much I'm pressing quarter inch hems into 40 holiday napkins I yai yai I yai yai I've been watching on it just looks weird to me I've been watching on Instagram they have these different things where they sew the two fabrics a certain way and then when you flip it around it has it the one piece of fabric ends up making an L shape and everything I think I keep saving them so that we can try it out one time all right did I get it right oh yeah Steam is my friend today. Look at that. That's what you call schnazzy. Oh, I hope so. Well, we have that, um, we got Fiona and stuff that, that's not sure which way they're going yet still, so we have to get through all of that. So I barely lost a couple points here and there, but that's not too bad. When you look at it, you're not going to see it, but when you get down like this, you know. That's really neat because it's like those, like it's some type of a cutout because these two fabrics are the same color. It looks like this is, and then like a hole in the middle of a donut. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our bonus half square triangles. We want to press to the dark, so whatever side you want to press to, that's the side you want looking at you when you press them. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we'll give them our little finger press to start so that we don't have any folds or any wonky little press seams. I've been doing these with my patrons and I've been telling them, you can put these as is, just throw them all into a bucket and forget about them. So that the next year when you work on this project, you now have to press and trim 150 or more half square triangles. Or I can just do eight of them right now. And then not have to, when I go to work on my project of putting a bunch of two and a half half square triangles together, they'll be ready for me and I can just get creative. I won't have to worry about cutting and trimming. And just because these are two and a half inches doesn't mean that in the future we can still trim them down to two inches if we want. Or an inch and a half or whatever. No, Denise, it's not way above your pay grade. You saw how easy it was. I didn't do any steps that were complicated. I went with the super easy flying geese one. And the only thing is you can make it just like this. You don't have to do the star and a star. If you make the 12 and a half inch one, this is just that one piece, this goes together, super easy. And I'm always willing to hold hands, so if anyone needs to have more conversations and emails, I can do little videos and stuff like that. Mostly probably on Instagram or something because that way they wouldn't mess with here on YouTube and stuff. 
but we can do it during live streams. So here is my center line. I like to put it so that the piece that's folded to the dark side is on my left. It just makes it easier for me to hold it and line everything up. We were talking with my patrons. I tried doing this. Some people do it with a two and a half inch square. I tried doing it with a four and a half, but I find that I need at least a six and a half inch square so I have plenty of room to put my fingers to hold it down. Yep, watch the replay and go slow. And when you go to put the 12 and a half inch block together, don't do this piece. Just take your six and a half inch piece of fabric and sew it in. That'll make it super easy. You only have to make one block. So my diagonal line is going right on that folded seam there in the center. And I'm just going to move it down. I want to make sure my two and a half is on the fabric, but I'm just going to slide my ruler down a little bit so I can trim like an eighth or a sixteenth off on these two sides. So I will trim here and trim here. Then take that top corner and just spin it around so my dark is on the other side. Now I'm going to line up two and a half on the edge of the fabric just like if I was trimming up a square keep my diagonal in the center. We want to have both fabrics in the corners. And that's going to give us our nice sharp pinwheels. And you trim it up. And there you go, two and a half inch half square triangle. And we have eight of them. I'm going to keep trimming them, but first I'm going to show you what I worked on this morning so that you can see that and then we'll just keep trimming up. This was the, one of those quilts that I had made several years ago and I never finished it. And the, it's not perfect, so the, the seams aren't all lined up, the, nest, the, uh, the seams didn't get nested or anything like that. So it's not perfect, but it's gonna be a sewing, well, this is a sewing machine mat, it's completely done. So this is the tropical flowers that I'm turning into zipper pouches and tote bags and stuff shows a new white fabric that I just purchased. It's got a wood grain on it for the binding. I've been doing single fold binding. Pat Sloan does them on her regular quilts. And I gotta say, I rather enjoy the single fold binding, not just on the little ones. Yep, stop, pause it, rewind it, do it again, and keep going. Thank you, thank you. And on the back, I have this purple sky that's faded in and out and I went with simple quilting because you don't have to go anything complex and if you don't do really good so here's the thing as I mentioned when I sewed these together I didn't match all of my corners so sometimes when I'm going straight down this seam here some of it goes this way some of it goes that way it's not perfect so I used the wiggle squiggle on my machine or you can do it by hand and now it doesn't matter if it's perfect or not because it's like this. There is no straight line. And I just did the patchwork grid. So like this piece is, this piece over here is like three and a half inches. And this piece over here is five and a half inches. So it's not even, it's not beautiful and perfect, but it's fun. And it'll be really fun to put a sewing machine on or to hang it up on the wall. So there you go, you have plenty of room with your sewing machine. If you have a bigger one like my Juki with the big table and stuff, you have plenty of room in the front and the back just to have some bright color in your room. So I think that works out really well. That's going to be going into the shop. So if anyone's interested, you can email me or you know wait till it goes in the shop, but it could be a bit. Sometimes I'm a little slow. I get sidetracked by pretty projects. So does anyone have any questions? Thank you everyone. I love those. I have several projects for that fabric. So I have project bags, tote bag, sewing mat, I already made some like coin pouches and zipper pouches with it. So again, that was in my little basket there of things that needed to be trimmed up. So now we have these half square triangles. Remember, you can mix and match them any way you want. You can turn them around, 
They can be pinwheels, they can be zigzag quilts, they can be anything. And it all starts with this very first cut, making sure that line, that black line that goes down the center of your ruler is right there on that seam. It does brighten up the room a lot too. I love, I come into here and I see my, I see my curtain, my crazy curtain, and then I see these bright colors and it just, it makes me start with a smile on my day. Granted, I'm coming in here and I know I'm going to have a good day, or at least I hope I am, but I have all those bright, fun colors. Then we line up and we do the two and a half again. We still need to double check to make sure that that line is down the center because if we don't have both colors on our points, when we go to put them together, our pinwheels and such won't really look right. They'll, they won't match up. And that's in one of the spots that you will notice it a lot. So you don't want to, you don't want to notice it. You want it to be nice. Thank you everyone so much for hanging out with me today, for watching my videos, liking them, subscribing. Remember we have that Advent series coming up. I've been thinking about it and I think what I'm going to do is I was trying to think of how to do two videos, but I don't need to do two videos. I'm going to do what my friend sent me and what I sent my friend in one video and it'll still be less than 10 minutes. I won't have to. Bye everyone. Everyone can go ahead and head out. I'm just going to finish these up and ramble a little bit. So you won't have any of the random bonus videos like the thread video and stuff that I've been doing randomly during the week because you're going to get 25 days of Advent. So in December, you will have a lot of videos to watch. Put them into um, playlists. So if you don't want to watch them, you know, 10 minutes every night, you can put it in a playlist and watch them all at once and just let it go off in the background. My friend knows some of what I'm sending, so she knows I'm sending her fabric. Some of you have been very generous and send me boxes of your scraps and fabric, and when it's not bright and colorful, she doesn't care for the bright and colorful, and I don't care for like Civil War and stuff like that. Some of it I will use because, you know, if I put it in the shop and people will want to buy it, but Oh, the Advent videos are fun. It's a lot of work for me in the beginning. It takes me about a week to get the videos all recorded and edited. This time, I'm not going to, I'm not going to change my shirt. I'm going to record them. My friend now knows. She didn't, she thought I was opening the package in the morning, doing the video, editing it, and getting it ready for at night. She didn't realize that I was doing them all at once, and I didn't want to hurt her feelings, you know? Because it's a nice surprise. You want people to open them up one day after another, but to do the videos, I have to open them all at once. Otherwise, I, I mean, I could do the videos every day, but I don't think I would be able to do it. I know I wouldn't. That would just burn me out. I still got all the excitement because, let me tell you, after I open up everything up, uh, two days later, I won't remember. I put everything in one basket, and I don't use it until after Christmas so I don't I don't remember oh thank you Giovanna I'm glad you join us here on the live ones I look forward to them too and they're fun and along the way I I have I oh, I am making something something for my mother and I'm almost done with that something something and I can't show you guys I will probably make one video that'll come out after Christmas. So after you're all done with the Advent, you're like, oh, that's it. There's no more. I'll put up another video if, I, if it works out that way. No guarantees. But I will try to get another video of all the things I made for people that got it for Christmas and I couldn't show you ahead of time. Except for like Robbie's socks because I'll show you those. But I don't want to show what I'm sending to a couple of people, and I don't want to show what my mother is getting, so. so 
this is the last one and we'll just play with them a little bit and then I'll let you guys go. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this afternoon. Yeah, we have to keep the secret. Does they, you know, last year, you know, I didn't have to worry about my mother. She, you know, she wasn't, I just started talking to my mother in the last couple of years. So we really haven't been communicating. So there really wasn't anything to hide. My kids don't watch my videos. Plus, like my daughter wanted a quilt, she picked the fabric, she picked the pattern, she picked the quilting, you know, she picked the size, everything. There's no surprises left for her. All right. So I like, I like this. I like when you can play with this and have them. I don't know how it looks when you get going and everything, but I think this would be kind of fun. I definitely love the zigzag. It just takes a bit to look for it. Yeah, there it is. This is a definite, like when you need a design wall. Now I love the zigzag quilts. So these are the bonus ones. And you're gonna get eight for every 12 and a half inch block you make if you make your flying geese this way. As I said in the beginning, if you make your flying geese four at a time, no waste, all you'll have is the little bit of trimmings you might need and that's it. You won't have bonus half square triangles. So for those of you that don't wanna waste any fabric, that's the way to go. You can also do it, do a little bit of math and figure it out and do it the half square triangle way. So however you want to do it, remember you can always have pinwheels. You can always make pinwheels. It just takes a little bit. Hi, Michelle, we're just getting ready to go. Yeah, Kathy likes to chat a lot. Yes, you can do this as a border or you can, you can make these as your border. They would be like prairie points, but not prairie points. So there's a lot of things you can do with these and you can put them almost anywhere in any part of your quilt, but save them all up for a scrappy quilt, put them around the border, make them their own quilt, put them down the center of the back on the back of your quilt. You can really do anything and you can just do like I do and just take them and then put them. Now I know I have more hiding somewhere, but oh, that's where the red is. I was wondering where I had that. Robbie's socks, so I chose them. But see, I have a bunch of these that I made. I saved everything in the past. I mean, look how tiny that is. That is, that's an inch and a half. So that's gonna be trimmed down to an inch. And that, yeah, pot holders. So I have all kinds of them in here. I mean, I have them jammed in, that's a lot. So you can go ahead and do those. Put them in a Ziploc bag, put them in a basket like this. I even have some of you guys have sent me stuff. So I've saved your leftovers. All different sizes, but again, these aren't trimmed down and half of them aren't even pressed. These are, that was a really fun, I know what quilt that's from. Some of these, they're not even pressed open or anything like that, so they're just in here. I'll probably pull all of these orange and black ones out and do something. These aren't even true half square triangles. Oh, maybe, let me write that down. Maybe we should do an hourglass. We haven't done an hourglass block. That was one of the ones I was thinking of. Hourglass quilt block. Okay, but I'm gonna let you guys go so you can enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Let me just put it back on the shelf. I will see you guys next time. We have a Whip It Wednesday video coming up. I haven't recorded any other bonus videos, so I'll have to figure that out this week. 
The Friday's video is going to be the sewing machine cover that covers the entire machine. Think of a tote bag upside down. We're not going to make it that way, but we could. But that's basically what it's going to look like. I have been making mug rugs with my patrons. We have been having a lot of fun. This is my candy corn fabric, but it's not candy corns, just the colors. Thank you, Sunny. There's the rain. All right, guys, thank you so much, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.